Last week on Spoon Drifters, we finally broke out our Sailrite machine. The kids took the box and decided to mail Liberty somewhere. Then I had to troubleshoot. But after all, it's something different. We managed to get all of those batteries in and buckled down, which was the big project. We're a family of six who sold our house, bought a boat, and now we're getting ready to sail around the world. Welcome to our channel. So we had to take out a couple of batteries and move where they're going to be in order to install these floor joists. But Todd's doing something fancy dancy. See how you do the floss? <laughs> <That's not out. laughs> Four joists ran across the tank and were kind of supported by the tank, but as you can see where we cut the floor out along the sides, here and over there there's no support. No support here. The floor has been tabbed in with fiberglass here, but there's nothing underneath here and these joists need to go underneath here to hold that up. Putting them back in, one of the things I noticed is the diesel tank is lower on that side than it is on this side in relation to this floor and that floor. And so Nothing's ever left I needed to know how, yeah I don't know that this boat is sitting here level, so the only reference points I have are front board to back board on the back wall. And I'm going to run a string line across those two so that I can at least make the floor flat. It may not be level, or hopefully it's level when it gets in the water, but it may not be level in the boat yard because I don't know if the boat's level, but at least it'll be flat. The floor will be flat. So this will help me know if the joists have got to come up or down or kind of what's going on with that. So. They're three quarters of an inch higher than this. So if I have a high board in the middle, it doesn't mess up the line. And then I can just measure to the top of the board, to the line, see if I got about a three quarters of an inch on each one, if it's correct. The reason I say that is because I had to pry this thing uphill in order to get this on and have it sit on here. So I need to know, do I need to trim the bottom of this off? or was that running downhill? That's what I'm checking right now. Don't kill yourself. I won't. Nope. So I'm an inch there. Yeah, 15 16 there. So at least these two are flat in relation to each other. That may or may not be running up or downhill a little bit, but it's close which means I needed to pry that up to get that board in. I did a good thing by doing that. That side there, 13 sixteenths. This side here, 13 sixteenths. That's good. Wiggling a little. A little bit high on that one. A little bit low on that one. Not too bad. I think this one's probably a little bit high on both sides. Eighth of an inch. Now uh, maybe three thirty seconds. That'll be totally fine for boat work. <laughs> so you want to be helpful? No. <laughs> this is staged. Do it like you did it before. So you want to be helpful? No. <laughs> there you go. What do you want me to do? He still hasn't told me what he wants me to do. <laughs> That's the best part, is you have to answer before you know, because otherwise you definitely would say no, right? Uh, anyway, we need to anchor these boards to this tank. I need somebody to drill those holes and anchor those things while I go cut more boards. You want to do that? No, I can't drill through the fiberglass. I can teach you how. I watched you. It was not easy. I can teach you how. You can do it! Alright, whatever. <laughs>
we'll give it a try. Five sixteenths. So we're just gonna have a hole. It's not the finished floor, is it? Is this the finished floor? You're asking me to align exactly perfectly to something I skill sawed by hand with no gap. I believe in you. <laughs> I was going to say, can, can you do that? Because I can't do that. I have seen you scribe things. Well, this is how you scribe them. You fit it, see how much it's off, scribe it, go out and cut it again. Oh, so you're going to well, fix I'm it. I'm going to have to do something. I'm going to try. Okay, I understand. But I am going to make it look better because I don't want to have a big, huge gap like this. So what tool are you using to do this? This is... One of those nifty things we used in fifth grade math. That's right. <laughs> compass, right? No. But this one is a compass scriber. The beauty of it is you can put it up against something and go like this and as it moves in and out it will translate but if I find my biggest spot, which is that, and I set my pencil tip for that, and I do that, it tells me how much I need to cut off in order to be a fairly tight fit. I see. I knew you could fix it. Shall return. Yeah, but look at that. Way better. Woohoo! So we just had a disaster. So we're in the process of putting this floor down and Katie. Katie brought Todd and I drinks and I went over to there to get mine and Todd ducked underneath of me to do something came up and hit my elbow and 44 ounces of pink punch spilled exploded everywhere all over the batteries Hi, Mom. I kind of lost it for a minute like Yesterday, Todd and I were talking about the problem with the batteries being in this space and what we were going to do to waterproof the area against our children's spills. It's kind of funny that it was me that spilled the first stuff on our batteries. <laughs> Sorry, what was the question you asked me? I said, are they ruined? No, they're not ruined. No, they're sealed and they're, uh, they're not even connected yet and they got plastic connectors over all the connectors so they're fine it's just kind of a temporary momentary cleaning setback how's that cleaning setback and it's hotter than heck and i don't have a drink anymore what can you go swimming when we get that sure what was that katie don't tell her sure why she has to have somebody take her because you don't want to go swimming? I've taken them swimming like seven times in the last week and a half. They just went swimming yesterday and the day before and the day before and the day before. You have to go get me another soda, Abigail. 
not soda. Punch. I'm not drinking soda. This is my They're gonna thing that I'm though. doing. There's only one person working. She's going to be like, why the heck are you back? <laughs> Alright, we gotta put the battery back. Now the battery is wet. Blue tape. Blue tape. Oh, real? Don't start. I'm taking this one tomorrow. It's supposed to be sunny tomorrow. It's supposed to be sunny. Hey, you can get a suntan in the... No. I laid out there for two and a half hours when it was like this. I didn't get anything. Nada. But after laying in the sun for an hour and a half, I had that tan line, so, like, right afterwards. Because Katie wants a really good tan before she goes to Alaska. I'm going to lose my everything in Alaska. It's not sunny enough to get a tan. There's a pair of that. Are we putting the puzzle back together? We're trying to. This is going to be the hard one. It's screwed down, and then the top, the floor is glued screwed over. down, glued down, and 5200 in place. <laughs> However, one difference is that I've made this with access points. That was the important spot. They didn't do any access points. Everything was buried. Okay, dearest, show us how this puzzle fits together. You have a brilliant idea. This wasn't my idea. This was your idea. <laughs> this time you were not r r wrong. You were r right. This little ledger right here, all that does is slide underneath like that. This side here will come down and we will have a latch underneath this that locks it into place from this side so that it can't come up. And then when we lift this one up, we'll unlatch this and pull this out. But those, those uh, ledgers will keep this from falling off when it's not supposed to come off or coming out when it's not supposed to. How's that? All right, half more ready to go. Yep. Got to take part of my redneck engineering. how you get more out of your saw than it was designed to do. But I didn't teach you that. said it was three times stronger, so we'll find out if it actually is or not. So here's the question. We just completed a major project. It is... I have no idea what time it is. 8 o'clock. Boatyard closes at 6. And we're still here, but um, we know how to get out of the gate. But it's getting dark. Major project done. We can walk on our floor again. Batteries in. Diesel tank painted, clean. All that stuff done. How would you you celebrate this would you go for prime rib <laughs> would you just go to Taco Bell <laughs> well or would you just go home and shower and read a book Katie watch spoon drifters on YouTube <laughs> Katie has corn dogs waiting for us Katie has corn dogs waiting for us 
and waffle fries. Corn dogs. Uh, corn dogs. All right. I guess we can celebrate with corn dogs. <laughs> How do you celebrate? That was the whole thing. How do you celebrate <laughs> accomplishing a major task? Because oh, keep in mind, we don't drink. So. That's true. <laughs> but, you know, the drinking as I understand it. Now, I'm not a professional because I don't drink. But as I understand it, the drinking works whether you accomplish a task or whether you had a crappy day. <laughs> right? Well, today, parts of today were crappy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. I know I said last week that we were going to look at putting the benches and all the remodeling that we did to them, but I had way more footage than I thought I did. So we'll get to that next week. <laughs>